So there is a weird paradox regarding vaccination, and it's the fact that some way pro-vaxxers should have all the possible advantages when they try to convince a neutral person. Just to give some numbers, in many countries before COVID, anti-vaxxers were less than 5% of the population. So a very limited manpower. Furthermore, trust in vaccination and in general in scientific institution has been supported by traditional media and massive communication campaigns. And even experts, both experts in communications and experts in virology, so in the topic they are discussing about. And you know, it's not like anti-vaxxers have been considered as some kind of cool minority that we need to protect and give them rights or anything as it happens with many other minorities. With anti-vaxxers, the story is mostly that being called anti-vaxxer is mostly a derogatory term. You wouldn't get it as a compliment usually. And again, all of this was true already way before COVID because actually in 2019, the World Health Organization declared vaccine hesitancy one of the top 10 threats to global health. So despite having all the possible advantages, actually pro-vaxxers were very, very bad at convincing the neutral which instead were convinced almost way too easily by anti-vaxxers. So in today's video, we will discuss about a scientific article which I wrote, which actually solves this riddle, this paradox. And we will see also how this actually impacts the way we make policy on vaccination and even in general scientific communication. So if you're new to the channel, welcome. This is Social Complexity, a channel where we try to explore the complexity of our society. But actually we don't just use the classical methods from the social sciences, but we use mostly methods from computational social science, which is a field which combines physics, math, computer science, psychology, sociology, pretty much everything. And indeed, in the study we will discuss about today, we will be discussing also about some social simulations even if there would be some data, don't worry. You know, we don't want just to simulate things, we also want to confirm that actually things are really like this in the real world. So how do we solve this mystery? And the first thing we should ask is, is this mystery even true? Because actually there are some people which question the existence of neutral people on the topic of vaccination. Which is to say that on some topics like vaccination, either you are in favor or you are against. There is no middle ground. And this actually seems reasonable if you think about it, because many of the people which are against vaccination, many times they present themselves not as being against, but as being some kind of neutral. They're not against vaccines, they're mostly like for being open-minded. However, they still discuss about all the dangers of vaccination, do not get vaccinated, etc, etc. It's a little like the sentence, I'm not racist, but. You declare yourself not as a racist, but it's very likely that what you are going to say is going to be kind of racist. However, there is a big problem with what we have just said. Because, yes, many of the people who are actually against vaccination might introduce themselves as being neutral, but that doesn't mean that all the neutrals then are actually against vaccination. This is a very common fallacy, which you can think about it in terms of all cats are animals, but not all the animals are cats. So most of the anti-vaxxers declare they're neutral, but not all the people who declare themselves as neutral are actually anti-vaxxers. But then one question would be like, how can you be uncertain about vaccination? Again, if you think about it, it really makes sense to say either you're in or you're out. You cannot really be in between. But actually being undecided on a topic is quite normal. You know, you might think about either you like pizza or you do not like pizza. There is no middle ground. But if someone asks you if you want to eat a pizza tonight and you already ate pizza three days in a row, you might be quite ambivalent and say like, I really would like but also I would not. And in that case, actually the opinion of other people surrounding you might have a very big importance because maybe you can be surrounded by people who says like, you know, life is short, let's go and eat more pizza. 
or you might have some people which says like, you know, you should care about your health, maybe it's something different tonight. And you know, all of this was about what is plausible. But again, we want to use more data. We want to be certain about what we're talking about. And indeed later, we will see that actually countries in which more neutral are moving to be anti-vaxxers actually have a pretty big drop in vaccination coverage. Meaning that those neutrals probably were really neutral because otherwise it would have changed nothing. Okay, so now that we showed that actually neutrals really exist, and so this is a real paradox, we need to understand how to solve this. And the solution to this problem came almost by accident when I decided to study the opinions on vaccination. At the time, I was developing a new method for studying opinions and how they are distributed, a method called raising. Eventually, if you're interested, you can check it in the relative video. But the important thing today was that at the time, I was expecting some way to find that anti-vaxxers were kind of very far apart from the system because I was thinking of them as extremists and so I would expect them and their pattern of response to be very isolated from the system. To my surprise, I found almost the opposite. Actually, the very isolated ones were not the anti-vaxxers, but the pro-vaxxers. So let's take just a moment to understand what actually this means. It means that in general, in the responses to a survey on vaccination, we found almost two main groups of people. The first group was almost everyone. It was people ranging from completely disagreement on vaccination to mild agreement on vaccination. This means that their pattern of response were kind of overlapping. You might find people who completely distrust some aspects of vaccination, but then they trust some other aspects of vaccination. The second group instead was composed of people who strongly trusted vaccination. And so if they responded that they strongly trusted one aspect of vaccination, they would respond that they strongly trust all these other aspects of vaccination. So how is this informative in any way about the paradox we mentioned before? So there is an important framework which is called social influence. And it's based on the idea that if two people are very similar, they can influence each other a lot. If they're very different, they will have very little influence on each other. To give you an example, if someone recommends you to watch a movie, if you have a lot in common to this person, you're very likely to listen to them. Instead, if you have very little in common with them, probably you will not follow their recommendation. If this is true, it would mean that some way the neutral people have quite a lot in common, they have a lot of overlap with anti-vaxxers. And this would explain how the anti-vaxxers are actually so good at convincing them influencing them and bringing them on their side. Instead, the pro-vaxxers, since they're pretty much isolated and they have very little in common with anyone else, will really struggle in bringing anyone else on their side. Okay, but this sounds like a plausible explanation, but we want to know if this is really the case. And to test this hypothesis, we initially use simulations of social influence what I mentioned at the beginning, the social simulations. So we took the data, we give the data to the simulator, and for each country, we check actually what the simulation was predicting, if a country will have more or less anti-vaxxers in the following years. And we make the same prediction based on raising. So we took the data, we passed them through the other method, which we discussed before called raising, and we estimated the separation between the pro-vaxxers and the neutral. What we found was that the prediction from raising actually were in good agreements with the other simulations, which means that the theory pretty much holds. But again, this is only theory. It would be good if we actually have some proof of this. So to test that this was the case, we use other two datasets, one of vaccination coverage and another one of trust in vaccination. And we saw if with our method, with data from 2018, we were able to predict data from 2019 
in both datasets. In both cases, we found significant correlations, which means that the predictions from Raisin actually match on average with the data from the datasets. And if you're interested in the range of correlations, they're about 0.3 which might sound like pretty small, but for such a big social event, actually it's a very big number. To put it in context, the correlation between trust in vaccination and actually vaccinating your children, so even a static measurement, not even a prediction in the future, actually the correlation is between 0.2 and 0.4. So the conclusion so far is that it looks like we have some pretty strong proof that there is this effect that some way the neutral are more attracted by the anti-vaxxers because they have more in common. And they have more in common because of the structure of society. Because the pro-vaxxers, some way they have very little variability. They do not mix too much with the neutrals. So am I suggesting that we should push the pro-vaxxers to become more neutral? I don't think this would be a great idea. Probably this would make a better connection between the pro-vaxxers and the neutrals, but it will also push a lot of people from being vaccinated to not being vaccinated. So I think it would be a very risky move. But there are actually two important things that we can do to still integrate this information into our actions. The first one is not for everyone, but it's mostly like for policy makers, people who actually make policies and communication campaigns. And it's the fact that if they target people who are already partially convinced, so the people who act almost like a bridge between the pro-vaxxers and the neutrals, they might actually do worse and increase this separation of the pro-vaxxers from the neutrals. Indeed, in the paper, which you found in the description below, we even run some simulations and we showed that you might make some policies which are not taking into account the structure of society, which actually might do worse and might backfire very heavily. Indeed, what might happen with these policies is that initially you can push a lot of people into being pro-vaxxers. So you will see an increase in the number of vaccination. However, you also increase the separation between the pro-vaxxers and the neutrals. So now the neutrals are in very close contact with the anti-vaxxers. So even if there was an increase, an initial spike, you will see then in the following years some kind of backfiring effect in which a lot of people then are turning into anti-vaxxers. If you know that this effect is possible, you should really take into consideration when designing the policy. The second point instead is a little more about science communication and everyday life. Indeed, one tactic from the anti-vaxxers that seems to be very good is the fact that some way they present themselves as neutral. In this way, actually, they have a lot in common with the neutral people. And when they start a conversation with a neutral person, they might have a lot of influence on this person. So the next time we want to spread trust on vaccination or trust in science or whatever other topic, instead of starting saying like how sure we are about this topic, we might start trying to get a little more common ground with the other person. Trying to see actually how they perceive the topic, why they are unsure, and try starting the conversation from there. To be honest, this final part was a bit of a stretch because the main study is not really about communication, but is mostly about this horizontal structure and how people can influence each other. So I hope the video was interesting and possibly useful. you find all the information below. If you would like to see more comments like this, make sure to subscribe and I don't know, do all the things, click the bell. As usual, do your homework, write up your papers and remember to embrace the power of complexity.